Hey everyone, so I'm Powie Nitsen Pan. You guys can just call me P if that's easier for you. And um, I am the dog seatbelt lady at Dogs Rights. Um, but before we jump into this, um, if you go to the file section on your um, your webinar, there's a bingo capture board. So if you want to have a fun way to take notes, I don't know if you guys can see that, um, then you can go ahead and download it, print it out. And I'm going to talk about each of these things in the webinar. You can just jot it down and you fill in the whole thing, take a snapshot of it and post it on Facebook, tag Dogs Ride Certified and YDF, then you're going to be entered to win a $25 gift card. So throwing that out there, a little fun way to um, take notes about dog seatbelt safety. Um, so there's that. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into this content here. I want to ask you first. Who knows the arm seatbelt maneuver? You know how like you slam on the brakes and you put your arm straight out to make sure your dog doesn't go anywhere? I've done it so many times and it's not a very effective way <laughs> to keep your dog safe. So we're gonna talk about how to actually keep your dog safe in the car. Um, go here. So I had always wanted a dog growing up. This is Piper. I mean, what kid didn't want a dog growing up, right? After I graduated college and I got my own apartment, I was like, all right, now I need to get a dog. And I got this little chocolate lab puppy. She was addicted to cigarettes when I got her. That was an experience, but um, she grew up to be my very best friend. We were always out and about together. We would go on long hikes and go explore new towns, go swimming every Saturday. And she was just my very best friend. But then this happened. Um, a teenager lost control of his car and slammed right into us. And I knew that we were gonna collide. Like I slammed on those brakes and I knew it wasn't gonna be enough because this car literally just showed up in front of me out of nowhere. Um, and so Piper had been thrown into the back of my seat. She broke her back and was paralyzed. And I didn't know that at the time. Um, I had never buckled her up, so you know she wasn't secure. I was stuck in the front seat behind my seatbelt. Um, and so like, you know, I learned really quickly that day that a seatbelt saved my life. But my dog, my very best friend in the world didn't have anything to protect her at all. You know, um, I'd wait for the paramedics to come and I could just hear her crying behind me. And, um, you know, they had to like scoop her out with a blanket and they said like, watch the teeth. And I was like, what do you mean? It's like, this is like the most gentlest calmest dog in the world and like that's how scared she was and um you know on the way to the hospital i was asking about her they were like she's she's in good hands and everything's gonna be fine and i believed at that moment that it was gonna be fine uh until i heard her name being whispered behind the hospital curtain and it turned out that the vet had called to ask to give her another dose of pain meds um because she was in so much pain and they couldn't do anything to help her so I knew that I had to say goodbye to my girl that night and it was devastating <laughs> to say the least. So what did I do? I started researching seatbelts for dogs. What else could I have done? So um, I came across Center for Pet Safety and I learned that um, they do crash testing for the different dog seatbelts on the market and that only four brands at the time, now there's five, yay, um, but only four brands at the time had actually passed crash testing by Center for Pet Safety. That was like four brands. Never heard of these four brands before. I don't see them in our stores. Um, and I feel like I'm in the pet stores a lot. Like I, I haven't seen them. And if I haven't heard of them, then I'm sure other people haven't either. And so, um, I decided to start up Piper's Walk, which is a dog event to raise awareness for dog seatbelt safety. You know, just really getting the word out there and starting to prevent these dog injuries and fatalities from happening. So we had this event in Olney for the last two years. Well, last year was virtual, two years before that was in Olney. And we've got all these vendors come out and um, it's like a big dog party, but we're, we're learning about dog seatbelt safety at the same time and getting dogs buckled up. So, um, from Piper's Walk, we raised some funds to do crash testing with Center for Pet Safety. And this is the first crash test that we did. It's the PetSmart Top Paw Harness. And we really learned that not all seatbelts are created equal. 
Um, and I'm going to show you uh, how that happened. Here we go. So it's really important to know that uh, not all seat belts are created equal because crash tested does not mean that it passed crash testing. Okay, so here we go. So I want to pause it real quick. This says that it's been crash tested according to industry standards. Just so you know, there are no set standards across the whole pet industry. So putting that out there. So as you can tell, it didn't do anything to protect that dog at all. So important. All right. That's the, the top paw harness. The, the thing I want you to take away from that is that crash tested does not mean that it passed crash testing. No matter how great the packaging looks, no matter what it says on there, you got to make sure that it's certified by Center for Pet Safety, okay? Um, and then extension tethers. We have to talk about extension tethers because they are everywhere and they increase the risk of injury. Um, Center for Pet Safety actually has an advisory out against them and an extension tether looks anything similar to this, okay? Um, it's anything that connects from the dog to the seatbelt itself. So you've just, you've got this tether here. And I'm just gonna read this to you as is because I think Center for Pet Safety the way they write it is so powerful. Um, they say that pets are essentially clotheslined by extension tethers. They launch forward and snap back with the spine incurring the most damage. Reports of paralysis, blunt force trauma, and in some cases, the spine has been damaged so severely that the internal organs could no longer function and the dog had to be humanely euthanized. This infuriates me because this is what happened to Piper who wasn't wearing a seatbelt at all. You know, so knowing that a product that's out there on the market could cause the same injuries as a dog who wasn't buckled up at all, it's just not okay, you know? And um, we did an, an extension tether test this uh, in 2019. And I do wanna show you just a quick snippet here. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Oh, it does let me, great. So you can see that not only is a dog thrown off the seat, but you see all that pressure from the spine there, right? That's what they're talking about. That's why the extension tethers put the dog at so much risk. Okay, um, so tethers are super, super dangerous. Um, this is the Kurgo Auto zip line. Um, a zip line is the like the bungee that goes across the top of um, of the car handles in the back, you know. And then your dog is um, tethered to the zip line. So this is 
how that one fared. Crazy, right? No, could you explain again what the definition of an extension tether is? Um, Barbara knows someone who clips an extension to her walking harness. Is that what you mean? Yes, yes. Anything that clips from the dog's harness or collar um, to the seatbelt. So a tether usually has um, like a loop on the end here that the seat, like the human seatbelt goes through and you buckle the seatbelt in, okay? Um, or you have a direct um, seatbelt tether. So you've got like the clip on one end and then like a seatbelt buckle on the other, you just buckle in. So they're really, they're really easy to use. They're, it's tempting to use them because it's one click and you're done. Um, and you think your dog is secure in the car, but, it, but they're not. If it breaks, your dog is, is thrown. And if it doesn't break, you got all that pressure from the spine. Hope that helps. So what are the certified brands? You've seen what you don't want to use. The certified brands um, are listed on the Center for Pet Safety's website. If they're not listed on their website or on my website, dogsridecertified.com, then it has not passed the crash testing, okay? No matter what that packaging says, it has to be listed on the Center for Pet Safety's website. So what a seatbelt should do, this is the Sleepy Pod harness. Sleepy Pod is the only brand with a harness to have passed the Center for Pet Safety's crash testing, okay? Um, so this is Penny. Uh, she's wearing the Sleepy Pod terrain, and you can see that the seatbelt goes um, through, the human seatbelt goes through the harness and buckles in, and you're going to see the difference in how this works. Maybe. Come on, computer. Oh, no. Let's try again. Coming slowly. Sorry, guys. Okay. So, you've got, um, this is a sleep pod sport, sport and terrain. They're going to it's going to be the same, the same results in this test, okay? Um, it goes from small to extra large, up to 90 pounds, and here's how it works. So you can see the dog stays on the seat, barely is launched forward. And the dog's body is going to be thrown around. I mean, remember, this is a car crash, right? Um, but the important part is that the dog is on the seat. There's no extensive pressure on the spine. The dog isn't being thrown too far forward. And that's what a seatbelt should do. Okay. Um, so what is the name again? It's Sleepy Pod? Sleepy Pod, yep. Okay. So you might be wondering how to use this Sleepy Pod harness, how to buckle up your dog. Um, so I created an acronym for you guys. Buckling up your dog is a snap. It's really super simple. And I came up with this because my current dog, River, when I first got her, um, I got her a Sleepy Pod harness and I'm reading the directions, makes perfect sense. And then I go to put it on her and I'm like, this is, this is a little bit harder than I anticipated. Um, and so this just breaks it down really simply for you because it's just easier to see it in action. So here we go. Hey guys, I'm Lisa here from the yeah. Rivers Walk where we help to get dogs buckled up in cars. I'm here at the river and we are here to show you that buckling up your dog is a snap. So when I first got River, all I had was a sleep pod harness and the directions that came with it. And they make perfect sense, but it's one thing to read it on paper and then another thing to put it in action. So we developed an acronym for you. Um, Buckling Up Your Dog is a SNAP, S-N-A-P, um, to help you remember the different steps that you need to take in order to buckle your dog in. So here we go. S is for slide the seatbelt through. You take the seatbelt, slide. 
slide it through the loops of the sleeping pod clicket sport harness. If you have the terrain, it's the same concept. You're going to put it through the actual harness um, where the straps are. Okay? So slide the seatbelt through. N is not under the legs. The seatbelt cannot go under the legs by the belly or anything like that. It needs to go over the back always. Okay? You don't want to restrict the mobility in any way or get them all tangled up. So always over the back, not under the legs. Um, a is adjust. So you're, um, you saw that I pull this out little by little. I'm adjusting the seatbelt. You don't want to pull the seatbelt out all the way at first because you don't want it to lock up. If it locks up, your dog's not able to move. So make sure you adjust little by little as you go. And then lastly, P is push the seatbelt in. Good. And that's it. Buckling up your dog is a snap. Good job, River. So S, slide the seatbelt through. N, not under the legs, always over the back. A, adjust, adjust the seatbelt as much as you need. And P is push it in. And I hope that helps y'all. All right. So that just shows you just a quick snippet of how the seatbelt works. It's actually very super simple um, and much safer than the um, tether. So um you gotta ease into this though okay you're not gonna put the seatbelt on your dog and go for a trip down to florida it doesn't it doesn't work that way you've got to take it baby steps at a time okay um so first step is to just let your dog wear the harness and get used to it okay um we got it right here you've got these clips at the top where um you can attach the leash so it works as a walking harness as well. So put this um, on your dog, go for a walk, play with it on, like get your dog used to wearing this thing. And if you've got a puller and your, your dog is wearing like a T-touch or a freedom harness, those harnesses fit right underneath of the sleepy pod. And that's what my dog uses. Um, she has her, um, her freedom harness and then I put the sleepy pod sport on top and it's, um, it's, it's a good fit, okay? So there's that. Then um, you're going to get your dog into the car. Hop into the car um, and work on buckling up your dog in the car and not going anywhere at all. You're just gonna treat and reward for hanging out in the car in one spot, all buckled up. And once your dog is comfortable with that, then you're gonna start going for rides. Take a short ride first. Maybe you're gonna go like down the street, go for um, a ride around the block, um, and then build up to longer periods of time in the car so that you can take that long road trip down to Florida if you want to. Okay, so just baby steps um, leading into wearing the harness. No, and I have a few questions here. Sure. Um, Sleepy Pod has an adapter to keep Deborah, I lost your sound. Okay, let me try again. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Sleepy Pod has an adapter to keep the seatbelt from fully retracting. Yes. Do you recommend that? Yes. So I think you're talking about the S clip. Um, the S clip, you need that for larger dogs. Um, so the S clip will go at the top of the seatbelt. Um, and it will prevent it from, from retracting and locking up. If that happens, your dog won't be able to move. So the larger dog you have, um, the more likely you're gonna need an X-clip. Um, I recommend it with the large um, size for sure, um, and sometimes for the medium sized dogs. Small dogs, you don't really need it, but if your dog is kind of shy being in that, um, in the seatbelt and needs a little like, extra help with like the slack in the seatbelt, then you could use the S-clip as well. But you don't want to have like an excessive amount of seatbelt hanging around. It's just as much as you need for a dog to be able to move. And did the crash test take into account the effect of airbags? So my last conversation with Center for Pets with you kind of centered around the airbags. And um, basically cars are not made for dogs. So you definitely still have the risk of airbags. Um, but uh, the safest place for your dog to sit is diagonal from the driver, um, so the back seat. And um, there's a little video I'll show you later on about why um, that is. So. But yeah, they, we don't we don't test this with the airbag in consideration. 
Okay, that's it. There's a discussion going on about minivans. But you probably don't have an opinion on that. What do you mean about minivans? Oh, whether when you have multiple dogs, um, you need to have a minivan. Oh. They're talking to each other about that. Okay. Yeah, basically, you just need, you need a seatbelt for each dog. So, however, that's going to <laughs> to play out in the in the car. All right. Um, well, we talked about this a little bit already, but your dog still move around, right? Your dog can sit up, lay down, turn left and right, and that's why you need the S clip if you've got a bigger dog, so that your dog can have his mobility in the car. Okay. Um, your dog can't turn around in a full circle. Um, and your dog can't run all over the car, which is not what you want anyway. So your dogs be able to stay in one spot, but still sit up, lay down, turn left and right. And it's super cozy. Like these dogs are just sleeping there on the seat. It's no big deal at all. Okay, so um, don't worry about mobility restriction or your dog's not going to like it. Like it, it'll be okay. As long as you ease into it, no problem at all. So you got to make it a habit. Um, there's three mistakes that people make when it comes to buckling up their dog, okay? One is that you don't buckle up your dog at all, which I made that mistake with Piper, right? And you see the consequences of that. So one, you gotta buckle up your dog. Um, the next mistake is that you have, oh, goodness, um, Next mistake is that you have a seatbelt, but it's not certified by Center for Pet Safety. Okay, and then you've also seen the consequences of that using that tether or, um, you know, listening to the, the packaging that says crash tested, but it doesn't have the Center for Pet Safety logo on it. Um, and so there's those two. And then the last one is that you have um, a certified seatbelt, but you're not using it consistently. And so here's what this is all about. Like you've got to create the expectation for your dog, okay? Teach your dog how to ride the car. Like it's no big deal, normal routine. And if this is something new for your dog, you don't want to do it sporadically because your dog will never know that, oh, sometimes I have to be buckled up and sometimes I don't. So I'm not really sure how to act in the car. You just got to do it consistently, okay? Um, and the more you practice, the easier it's going to become. When I first started buckling up River, it took me like 15, 20 minutes to get it on her and everything. Um, and now I literally can do it in like three seconds. I can count to three and be done. So it just takes practice. You just gotta do it every time. And accidents are unpredictable. Uh, you, you can't say, okay, on this day, I plan to be in an accident. Nobody says that and no one can even make that come true. Um, so um, you just gotta buckle up your dog all the time. I get so many people tell me that, um, Oh, we're just going down down the neighborhood road like we'll be okay like i always buckle up my dog on the highway over 50 percent of car accidents happen on rural back roads and the neighborhood roads and if you think about it it makes it makes sense because you got all those curves you got the blind spots um there's less traffic so people are speeding like crazy right um and my accident was actually on like um, a back road is a one lane um road both ways and you know like it, it it don't have to be on the highway for an accident to occur. So you got to buckle up your dog all the time. And just a quick little story, uh, because I'm human and I, <laughs> I'm in a hurry to, with, with River, I live in a apartment building. So I've got this garage where like, I can drive like a minute down to like where the grassy area is. And we're on our way out. I was like, okay, we're just going to go down. I, we're in a hurry. We're not going to buckle up going out of the garage will be fine well a car came flying around the corner i slammed in my brakes and pipe piper river um fell into the footwell of the car and i was like oh my goodness i have her in the seatbelt. i didn't buckle her up and then she went flying and it was like horrifying for me and so like now like, ever since then like i never skip buckling her up leaving the garage just to go like one minute down to the grassy area. Okay, so like that wasn't an accident. It was just breaking on, like slamming on the brakes, right? But she still went flying down. So it matters. Like it really, really matters guys to buckle, it up, buckle up your dog every single time you get into the car, no matter if you're going 30 seconds or you're gonna go for an eight hour trip, okay? Can't stress that enough. Here are a few more questions. Um 
One is how you feel about letting dogs lean out the window. Okay, so Center for Pet Safety will tell you about all the different hazards that go along with that. And I'm gonna tell you that you gotta use your own judgment about how how much window you wanna give your dog. Because I do want, I want your dog to be happy. I want my dog to be happy. Like that's the most important thing to me. Um, and so I put, I put River's window down all the way and she can slip out the window if she wants to because I know she's not gonna stick like half her body out the window, you know? So your dog is buckled up. Your dog still has access to the window, but your dog's not gonna be able to do it out the window. So I hope that answers your question. I think it's all about preference, but for me, I feel safe that, that my dog is buckled up and I'm gonna let her have the freedom of the window because it makes her happy. Also, is this safer than crating in the car? Um, we're gonna talk about um, about some kennels in just in just a little bit, actually. Um, there are two kennels um, that are certified by Center for Pet Safety. So they all they both have their pros and cons. So we'll we'll get to that. Okay. And someone else says she has a hatchback. How can two dogs be safe in the car and the back seat, but not in the middle seat? Do you understand that one? In the back seat, but not the middle seat. The back two end seats. In the back section of the car and not in the middle seat. I'm not sure what she's asking. Could, could you clarify your questions um, for me? Um, because basically, as long as it, if I'm understanding, like, if we're talking about like, a, like the back row of a car, like it's like the three seats, then it doesn't matter where you buckle up your dog, um, as long as your dog has a seatbelt. So, so the middle seat's fine. The middle seat is fine. The, the safest place is going to be diagonal from the driver or the furthest um the furthest seat if you have an suv like the back row but any seat belt is, any spot is going to keep your dog safe any spot where you have a, a seat belt and i assume that the kurgo isn't crash tested and approved it is uh it is not on the center for pet certified product list no okay that is a big one <laughs> that one is a big one it does say crash tested on their packaging. Um, I know that their their products, um, some of them come with a tether. Um, there, you can see that kind of for pet safety from specific information about Kurgo if you want, but it did not um, it did not um, end up on that certified list. Okay, here's the clarification. Mm -hmm. She's talking about a row in the back of the car. It's the back of the car near the hatchback door. The cargo area of the car. So is a dog safe there? Is there a way to make him safe in that area of the car? If you're talking about the hatchback of the car, no. There right at that's that's one of the problems right now. Like there's no way to keep the dog safe in the hatchback of the car. But your if your dog is able to be on the seats that's closest to the to, to the back, then that's a good thing for them. That makes sense. And another question is whether you have any tricks for dogs that want to chew the seatbelts. Oh, yeah, we could come up with some chewing the seatbelt. Well, keep, you gotta keep your dog busy in the car. Um, if you have, you can give your dog like a bullet stick. You can give your dog um, a stuffed Kong. Um, you know, you can if you have those. Um, like those West Paw toys, like the Quizzle, where you put like the boy stick inside and it takes them longer to chew. That's a good one if you're going for like a long, um, a long drive. So give your dog something, something else to do that will motivate them to do that rather than chew on the seatbelt. And it'll also come down to like training your dog to, to like, to pay more attention to those other mo more motivating things rather than chewing on the seatbelt. And a snuffle mat. If you have a snuffle mat. Stuff that up with some food and give that to your dog and have them um, sniff out the food instead of um, chewing on the seatbelt. 
And someone else wants to know what the difference is between the sleepy pod harness and using your own harness in the same way. Whatever harness you're using, if it's not sleepy pod, it won't pass the crash testing by Center for Pet Safety. And so the thing about about this harness, um, it the it's gone through a whole bunch of like rigorous testing and specifications. So like they have to do like a material test of like how far the product's allowed to stretch, um, how strong like the buckles are, how strong this whole thing is. Like it feels like a seatbelt. Um, and so if we're just using another kind of harness, I don't know what harness you're, you're using, that's not made to be a seatbelt. So you don't know if it's gonna break in case of, like if there's a crash. Um, it's all about like, it's about a whole lot of stuff about how this whole thing is created. I think you're going to get into this, but there's a question about what if your dog is too small oh. or sleepy pod small? Hang in there, I'm gonna get into it, <laughs> yeah. And then the price range of these products. Um, it ranges between $79.99 up to 110 for this for the harnesses. Are there any other questions? There, there's some more. Um, well, that's an answer. Let's see. Will it work with bucket seats in the back row? Define bucket seat, like the like the one, like the one seat. If it has a seat belt, then yeah. <laughs> if you have a human seat belt back there and the dog can sit on the seat, it should work. Okay, why don't you go on with your presentation? I'll pick up more questions later. Okay. Super. All right. So now we're going to get into the other products that have been certified by Center for Pet Safety. Um, and the reason I talked about the harnesses first is because um, it's what most dogs end up in. It um, is for dogs between 17 up to 90 pounds. And so, and it's really versatile. Um, you can use it in any car. So that's why I started with that one. But we're going to jump into the other ones. Sleepy pod carriers. So for the person who asked about the your little dog, th this is for you. Um, this is for dogs under 17 pounds. Um, you've got the Sleepy Pod Air, the Atom, and the Mobile, and they're just based. They're they're different sizes, different shapes. It's based on your dog's um, your dog's weight, your dog's height, the way your dog likes to lay in the car. Um, so those are are the different carriers. The seat belt. Um, buckles up around the carrier and then you buckle the carrier into the seat belt. So it's like very, very, very secure, has a great structural integrity to them. So that's the Sleepy Pod Carriers. Zugo Pet Rocketeer Pack. This is a car seat for dogs under 25 pounds. So I think this is great because it'll allow your dog to be able to see out the window. Um, a lot of people tell me like they're not, they don't really want their dog to be in a carrier. How can they see out the window? Zugo Pet Rocketeer Pack is it. And if you're gonna, if you ask me, um, do the dogs like it? Have you ever buckled up your, a dog in a Zugo pet? I'm gonna tell you, no, I have not buckled up a dog in a Zugo pet because nobody wants to try it out. <laughs> um, but I, here's the thing. It's a really, I, I feel like it's an underutilized um, product. It could be so beneficial for, for the dogs to be able to see out. Um, it helps dogs who are anxious because it's got that like, that you know, that like cozy feeling around them. And I have all the sizes of the Zugo pet for people to try out before they buy it. Cause you don't want to drop $150 on this thing and your dog hates it and you, and you know, like then what's the point? I'll help you get your dog used to it. So throwing that out there, Zugo pet rocketeer pack, um, it's a car seat for your dog. What about extremely large dogs, like 112 pounds? Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. There's no solution for you, for the big dogs right now. It's a it's a problem. And what about dogs who like to rest on the floor behind the front seat? Yep. Any idea? There's no solution yet either. That's something that um, that I'm working on. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about those things also. You guys are good. <laughs> You're like one step ahead. 
And you'll be talking about uh, carriers or crates that would be okay for medium to large size dogs? We are here. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, gunner Kennels. Gunner Kennels, I cannot say enough good things about them. This is for dogs um, small, small through intermediate size. So you've got, um, here's your medium and large dog um, kennel, crate, whatever you want to call it, essentially. Gunner Kennels not only did the the crush or the crash test with Center for Pet Safety, um, they have five star rating from them too, by the way. Um, but they did um, a crush test. He threw it off a cliff, shot at it, ran over it with his truck, um, and this thing is indestructible. Like if you have a Houdini dog, like a dog that escapes out of everything, this is this is the product that you need. Okay, you need a Gunner Kennel. Um, it's got three locks on it and a key lock. Um, there's a drain inside, so you just hose it down and um, to, to clean it out. Uh, it's insulated, so it stays like cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. And um, you need these orange tie-down straps in order for it to be certified, for it to stay in place in the car, because you don't want it flying out, right? That wouldn't be safe. So um, Gunner Kennel is amazing if you have the space for it in your car. It's big, it's bulky. Um, you don't want to move it like everywhere but um it's also indestructible and what i would recommend if you're going the kennel route what about the other seat belts besides sleepy pod that are approved are you going to talk about those these are it okay so when i say when i say seat belt um i mean any any car safety restraint that has passed Center for Pet Safety's crash testing. So Sleepy Pod has passed the test, Gunner Kennel, Zugo Pet, Lucky Kennel, and then we're gonna talk about um, Away Pet Carrier. So those are the five brands. Um, so yeah, when I say seatbelt, it could be a harness, a crate, a, a harness, a carrier, or a car seat. Are there other questions? Um, Zara has a minivan, and since I think she's saying the kennel would fit, would that be okay? And yeah. it does need to be secured to the vehicle. It does need to be secure. You're going to, um, so if you have a minivan, you're going to want to go on to, and you're looking at Gunner, Gunner Kennels, you're going to want to go onto their website and take the measurements, make sure that um, that it fits into, into your seat and then it's going to hook down into your, um, the anchors in the car. So we can definitely talk more about that, but it should, it should work in any car, depending on like the size and the setup of how you have, have everything. Okay. That's it for now. Okay. All right. So Lucky Kennel is the other kennel that is certified by Center for Pet Safety. Um, it just came out like six months ago or so, and it's only the intermediate size that is passed. Um, and they only have the intermediate size anyway. So it's very similar product to Gunner, um, they, but they just have that one size. So if you're looking at the kennels, you've got a couple options here if you have a large dog. And then you have a Way Pet Carrier. It just came out like a month or two ago. So this is the fifth brand. Yay! Like I'm, I'm so happy that more brands are starting to become certified. You know, um, so this is the Way Pet Carrier. Um, it's a great thing to use for travel, and they're sold out already. So um, if that's something you're interested in, then check out a Way Pet Carrier and sign up for their their updates. So. Here we go. The problem is not solved yet, okay? We know that there's no harness for little dogs. I get that question so many times. Like, what about what about a harness for my little one? And there's nothing that's certified. Um, there's no solution. Hold on. I also want to throw out there those booster seats that little dogs use. They're they're not they're not certified by Center for Pet Safety. So if you think about it, they're on the booster seat. And how are they connected? How are they connected in there with the tether? Okay, so booster seats are not are not safe. Um, so that's for little dogs. For the giant breeds, there's no solution. Nothing over 90 pounds is certified at this moment in time. Um, 
there's no solution for modified vehicles. Okay, so um, people with service dogs and if they have and dogs who like to lay on the floor who, or who need to lay on the floor in these modified vehicles, we don't have a solution yet. Um, dogs are still traveling unbuckled. They're lost, injured, and killed every day. Like you can just Google search and find so much, and it's it's really it's really sad. And we just need numerical data. So I reached out to the um, NHST, all those letters, the National Highway Traffic people, right? And they said that they don't collect data on dogs killed in car crashes, only humans. But we know that it's, that it's happening. So we just need some numerical data because um, there's anecdotal stuff out there um, everywhere. And then we also have products that cause more harm than good that are still popping up everywhere and are still being sold. Um, so you know how like you're on Facebook and on your newsfeed, like all those little advertisements that pop up. I get seatbelts, um, like dog seatbelts pop up all the time. And I'm like, that hasn't passed enough for pet safety's crash testing. And that's a tether. And it shouldn't like, why is this, why is this here? Why is it on the market? Because there's no, there's no rule. There's no set standard out there. Um, so we got to fix this. Um, Crashes are about the metal barriers between the middle seat and the cargo area. Is that one of those things that can cause more harm than good, or is that okay? Um, it's it's fine, but it's not gonna it's not going to protect your dog. You know what I mean? Like it's not it's not a restraint. It's just a barrier. So your dog is still going to be flying into something um, if your dog is not secure. Um, so fixing, fixing the problem, here we go. Like you can help by buckling your dog in a certified seatbelt and sharing this information with all the dog people, you know, you know, like it starts, it starts with you and me and all of us as dog parents. Um, I've got a special ed background and something that, um, really stood out to me when I was learning about special education was that, um, parents of kids with special needs are the ones that started special education. There would be no no education for it for these special kids if the parents hadn't advocated for it and made it a thing, you know? And I feel like it's gonna be the same way with dog seatbelt safety. It's gonna start with us as dog parents advocating for certified products only. If we're only buckling up our dog in certified products and demanding that that's the quality that we want and that's that's what our dogs deserve and we're not gonna buy any of this other stuff that doesn't work or hasn't passed the test, then that's how we're gonna start changing the market and start demanding that there are going to be standards in the pet industry, you know? So let's just start with buckling up our dogs in a certified seatbelt and sharing the word so we can get everyone into a certified seatbelt. Um, and then while y'all are doing that, I'm gonna be working on creating a certified product for little dogs and giant dogs. I am so tired of telling you guys that I don't have a solution for you. So. We're going to find a solution. We're going to create this product. And um, I'm actually looking for engineers. If you out there or know of anyone who's an engineer and loves dogs and wants to collaborate on this project with me, reach out to me and let me know because I've got ideas, but I need an engineer to help me roll it into action. Okay. So we're going to do that. Um, we're going to figure out how to safely secure service dogs and modify vans. And hopefully this will help your dog who likes to lay on the floor as well. Um, we're gonna get some baseline data collected. I wanna start up a research project to get these numerical numbers in so we know what we're, what we're dealing, it, dealing with. Because over 6 million dogs um, are at risk to be lost, injured, or killed in car crashes every year. Um, we know how many dogs um, are about how many travel in the car. Um, and we know about how, like, what percentage of car crashes um, what percentage like happens throughout the year, but we don't have a percentage for dogs in car crashes. So we're gonna get that. And then we're gonna figure out how to get some laws passed. New Jersey has a law on um, buckling up their dog and you know, Maryland could be next, you never know. So that's what that's what's coming. And I wanna share a couple stories with you before we wrap up. Um, this is no, let me ask you some questions first, okay? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of them. Okay. What about the animals matter seats? Do you know what those are? I do not. Me neither. Animals uh, matter. I'll have to look it up, but I can tell you if it's not certified by Center for Pet Safety, then it's then it's been passed. Pass that thing. 
And at this point, what is the safest option for small dogs? Um, either any one of the other carriers, um, the carrier, the Google Pet Rocket Care Pack, the car seat, um, or the kennels, either one of those three. Your, the small dogs actually have a whole lot more options, um, but they don't have a harness option. Do you know if car manufacturers are looking into this too? Something, another thing that we've got to do, there's a lot of work to be done in this space. Um, and here's a question about the kennels. Um, she knows that they remain intact, but don't the dogs get thrown around inside the kennel? Does um, it just because the space is small enough that they don't get thrown? Yeah, yeah. When you're getting a kennel, you don't want to get one that's gonna that your dog is like tiny and you got all the space for your dog to be to be thrown around. You know, like you want to. You got to get the kennel appropriate for your dog's size so they're able to like turn around in it and stuff but not like you know it's not going to be too big for them um there's there's a you can you can add like pillows and blankets in there and like a bed if you want to make it like more cozy and stuff but gunner has a very very good track record you can see all of their success stories like those crates they're thrown and like nothing the dogs the dogs have are, are injury free which is like amazing which is wonderful to me um and the crates are like barely barely dented so your dog is safe in there just get the right size where do you get good bungee cords as a tie down for kennels no you have to get it straight you have to get it from gunner kennel you have um that orange tie down strap that you saw you have to get that one don't use your own bungee because those aren't strength rated um, those bungees could just break in a crash. Yeah. So you get it with the kennel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't use your own because it, it won't, that defeats the purpose. And it looks like the Animal Matters um, seat is like a, a carrier with a built in belt. But again, it's not crash tested. So. Yeah. Let me, let me show you something real quick. Let me just grab this. Can you all see this? Actually, I'm gonna go back to the other screen so I can make sure. I'm gonna open this up a little bit. All right, see this carrier? This is a sleepy pod atom, but look how like, I'm pushing down on it and this is not collapsing like at all, okay? It's got a structural integrity to it. It's light enough and small enough that you can carry it. It's got all these like pockets and all this stuff so you can like put in your keys and your dog's things, but it's going to remain intact. You're, it's not going to collapse within itself um, if there's a crash. And there's actually a story in here that I'll share with you about um, about a carrier that didn't protect the dog, and it wasn't a certified one. So, um, what I, I'm sorry, I forgot the brand that you that you were mentioning again already. But if it didn't, if it's not on the Center for Pet Safety's website, I I don't trust it. And that's yeah. You just don't know how it's how it actually does fare. Are there other questions? Um, here's a comment for Gunner. I believe the tie down is sold separately. Ours didn't come with that. Yeah, it, it doesn't come so with different it. options. You can buy for the bottom liner of the kennel. Could you repeat that? Sorry. There are also different options you can buy for the bottom liner of the kennel. Mm-hmm. Um, softer. Yeah, um, the kennel itself is like, you got the kennel itself. The kennel itself is certified as long as you're using the old tie down straps, which you have, you do have to get it separately. Like it's not, it doesn't come all together. Okay, so you have to get that, and then the the different liners are just accessories, so you can you can switch out however you want, um, whatever you want. So you got to customize it according to your dog, but the actual kennel and the tie down straps are the, the the crucial elements that you would need. Can you buy your own kennel and use the gunner tie downs? No, 
because <laughs> you're because that kennel is not is not certified by Center for Pet Safety. Um, it's all about you have to think about like the the quality of the product. Okay, so no matter how good something looks, like I know a lot of people have like metal crates in their car, um, and you know that's what I did in the very beginning with um, with Piper and her litter mate. That's how. Um, she traveled um, when she went with um, with her litter mate. This is like pre me and Piper only. Um, so, anyways, I found out that those metal crates. I mean, they they'll just crush in case of a crash. You can go on the Center for Pet Safety's website and see the different um, crash tests for the um, for like different crates and stuff. But basically, it's all about like the quality of the materials. Um, so if you're getting your own your own harness, like you don't know like how strong that really is. Like you can push down on it and all that stuff, but you don't have the strength of a crash test, you know? So just keep that in mind. Okay, the only other um, comment is that the sleepy pod carrier didn't last, well, she thought it would it would work for her dog up to 25 pounds but it didn't it, she had to get a new one a lot sooner than she expected sleepy pod the carriers only go up to 17 pounds then after that you switch to a harness and what are the qualifications needed for something to be considered for cps testing oh yeah there is um there's a whole um there's a whole list on the Center for Pet Safety's web website. Let me show you Center for Pet Safety. So, um, I know that like the strength test is one of them. My computer is so slow today. Um, it is, CPS certification. So here's like all these rules for um, the certification of the of the harness, but there's also like a whole like a whole booklet like of guidelines also. So this is just like the outer shell, okay? There's so much more like intricacies to this, but you can't have an accessory, so that like, you can't have that extension tether or the zip line. Um, Canine excursion is how far forward a dog can be thrown forward because you don't want your dog to be hitting like something in front of them, right? That doesn't make sense either. Like the dog has to be able to stay on the seat. Um, the the hardware. And so basically this is like how much the product is allowed to like stretch. You've got the hardware and stitching integrity. So again, like about um, the quality of the materials, will it break or tear if, if it's like in a, in a crash? Um, and so there's just all this stuff here that you could you could research, but it's very um, they really thought about everything. Um, when I went to go, when I went to the lab to like do the testing with them and stuff, and like watch this, there's so much there's so much care and like just so many steps that these engineers go through to prepare for the test to make sure that everything is just right for an accurate test, okay? So they're, they've got your dog's back, essentially. Should a dog be able to stand up and turn around in the crate? Yeah, crate, not carrier. In the carrier, your dog can um, can just lay down, but in the, in the crate kennel, yeah, your dog should be able to turn around a little bit. Just like, just like when you have like a, your crate at home, your, um, you don't want it to be too big. I know Rivers is huge because um, I thought she was going to be bigger and I never really um, switched it out. But, you know, there's enough room to turn around. Okay, that's it for now. Okay. Um, so I just got a couple stories to share with you. Um, this is Vito. Vito's dad was in a major crash. Um, and Vito is usually in the car with dad, like every day, all the time. So Vito's mom actually reached out to me after the crash and he got his seatbelt immediately afterwards. Like it was a fluke that Vito was not in the car that day. So um, now Vito rides certified. Uh, Romy, I, 
he was in an accident three months after I buckled him up. Okay, so I spent I spent like two hours with Romy and mom. Um, Romy was um, pretty anxious around me and a little reactive. So that's why like, I will take the time to make sure that you've got this right and at the dog's pace um, to make sure that everything is set. And I'm so glad that we were able to spend those two hours together because he used to roam free in the car. He used to sit in the front seat and um, we're just do whatever he wanted. And I convinced mom to put him in that back seat um, and buckle him up. And three months later, they were in a crash. So if he wasn't buckled up, he probably would have gone flying into that dashboard or even worse. Okay, so uh, here's Romy there for you. And this is Ace. Um, Ace used to travel in a carrier. It was not certified by Center for Pet Safety. And, you know, kudos to Ace's dad for like putting Ace in in a carrier, like I never thought to buckle up my dog in the first place, right? But he he tried. Um, he slammed on the brakes and Ace was thrown out of the carrier. So um, when I show you, showed you that sleepy pod carrier, you know, like that structural integrity really, really, really matters. This was just slamming on the brakes and Ace was thrown out of it. It didn't do anything to protect him for slamming on the brakes. Like imagine if there was a crash, what would have happened? Um, so Ace actually, um, outgrew the carrier anyway, and now he's in a sleepy pod harness. Um, but those are just some examples for you. And I just want to tell you, like, don't make the same mistake I did. Like, be, now that you know this information, like, prevent it from happening. Be, be proactive about it. And don't wait. Like, don't wait for, to, like, slam on the brakes and have your dog thrown out. Like, don't wait for a crash to happen, you know? Like, do it now essentially like you just never know when an accident's going to happen i don't want you to go through what i went through because it was terrible <laughs> to say the least um but just so you know i've got a buckle up a thon going on this month where for every seatbelt purchase i'm donating five dollars to a fido's um puppy seatbelt fund so fighters for freedom they um they train puppies into service dogs so we're going to get their their service dogs buckled up um as a start to move into figuring out how we're going to buckle up um, the service dogs into those modified vehicles. So we're just starting with the puppies first. Um, and then if you're ready to buckle up your dog, I've got a little freebie for you as well. So if you go to dogsridecertified.com slash YDF freebie, um, I'm gonna send you like a customized video guide for your dog. So tell me a little bit about your dog, um, how your dog likes to ride in the car and like specific things that you're looking for. Ask me any questions in there and I'll send you a personalized video guide to help you figure out um, your next steps and how to keep your dog best safe in the car and some fun games that you can play with your pup as well to get your dog really acclimated to the whole process. Um, so that's, that's what I've got for you guys today. And are there any other questions out there? Yep, there are a few of them. Um, is a carrier okay for a long car trip if they can't turn around? Yeah, you just gotta give your dog um, lots of breaks, you know? Um, you you can't go over like hours and hours on end without giving giving your dog a break in general. So as long as you just stop frequently, help them out, stretch your legs, you know, it'll, it'll be fine. And is your Sleepy Pod Snap video posted on your website? It is not, but I will send you, um, I'll send you something if you go to that, um, the YDF preview page. Um, I'll send you something specific for your dog. Like, so you do tell me your dog likes to lay down in the car. I'll show you a video of um, how to buckle your dog from the laying down position. If your dog likes to face forward, if your dog likes to face inward or outward. Um, this is all based on like your dog's comfort in the car. So there's, there's different ways to maneuver that seat belt for your dog. And here's another thing I've never heard of are the Zoo Go Pet Rocketeer Packs good for a dog that has a size medium harness. Do they even come in that size? Do you know what that is? Probably, probably not because the sleepy, the sleepy pod harnesses, the small goes up to 20, about 25 pounds, right? And the medium is like 26 to 45 pounds. It's just an estimate. And um, regard, regardless of like, the, all harnesses are kind of sized similarly. A medium dog would probably be too big for the Zugo pet, but what you want to do is measure your dog um, while they're in begging position. So like from from their tail end on the ground up to up to their shoulders when they're sitting up straight. Or even if you just take a tape measure and measure your dog from like shoulder to um, 
um, to their bottom, like measure how long that is. And then um, we'll compare it into the measurement chart and see if your dog could fit into it. But it's, it's really rated up to 25 pounds. Um, will the video offer stay for the next week? I think that is about it. Um, if you have more questions, you can look on Nud's website and you can email her directly. Yep. All my contact info is right here. And I'll drop it into the chat as well. So dogs ride certified.com slash YDF freebie. All right, so there's um, the website that you can go to to get your your video offer. Um, Deborah just saw that come in, and then uh, here's my contact info. So 301-337-1039. You can call me, text me anytime. Like I'm happy to chat. I love to chat with you guys. Like that's like my favorite part of of the job here. <laughs> it's a dog ride. One more thing for everyone. These, this will be on tape. So for friends of yours who missed it, um, probably later this week, or it might even be faster than that, we'll have this on tape and I will be sending out the link to everybody who registered. So you will be able to share this webinar with others. Um, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Um, and I hope a lot of people contact you and go out and get seatbelts. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's such a joy to be here. And um, if you need anything, just contact me anytime. I'm an open book. Great, thank you. Thanks. Bye guys. Have a good day.